Fetch the Slipper by Sheila Lavelle and Paul Amata. Read by Josie Lawrence. Grandad came downstairs one morning, looking very cross and grumpy. He looked as grumpy as a giraffe with a sore throat. I've lost one of my slippers, he grumbled. One of my best red velvet slippers that Betty sent from America. Now what am I going to do? Put your wellies on instead, said Mum. Grandad scowled. Ha ha, very funny, he said. You're some help, I must say. He sat down at the kitchen table. Jamie and Fiona giggled into their cornflakes. Dad poured some tea into Grandad's cup. Don't worry, Grandad, he said. Bembo will find it. Grandad scowled. Bembo, he said. What him? He's the stupidest dog in the world. He's very good at finding things," said Mum. She gave Grandad a plate of bacon and eggs. Jamie and Fiona began to shout, "Bembo, Bembo, where are you?" A big collie dog with muddy paws came running in from the garden. He was black and white and brown, with a bushy tail that never stopped wagging. Bembo liked fetching things better than anything else in the world. Fetch the slipper, Bembo," said Grandad. Bembo wagged his tail. He ran happily out of the kitchen and bounded up the stairs. Bembo was back in no time with a red velvet slipper in his mouth. I told you so," said Mum smugly. Grandad looked at the slipper. "That's the left slipper, you mutt." He said, "It's the right one that's missing." Fiona giggled so much she almost choked. Grandad flung the slipper on the floor. Jamie buttered a slice of toast. "Try again, Bembo," he said. "Fetch the other slipper." Bembo raced out again. He was back in no time with Jamie's old green shirt that had no buttons on. I haven't seen that for years," laughed Jamie. "Fetch the slipper, Bembo." With a joyful bark, Bembo dashed upstairs. This time, he came back with a pink plastic lavatory brush. I've been looking for that for weeks," said Mum in amazement. Everybody laughed, and Bembo galloped out again. He came back a minute later with Dad's red woolly nightcap. Now, where on earth did he find that? said Dad, scratching his head. Fetch the slipper, Bembo! Everybody shouted together, and Bembo raced out once more. This was the best game he had ever played in his life. Soon, Bembo had made a huge pile of things on the kitchen floor. He was puffing and panting, and his tongue was hanging out of his mouth. 
but he still hadn't found Grandad's slipper. Jamie put his arms round Bembo's neck. He looked straight into the dog's eyes. Slipper, Bembo, he said. Slipper! Fetch the slipper! Bembo looked at Jamie, his head on one side. Suddenly, Bembo turned and raced out of the kitchen door. He galloped down the garden path. He leapt over the gate and bounded down the lane towards the village. Now he knew what everybody wanted. What on earth can he be up to? said Mum, pouring another cup of tea. Something stupid, I'll bet, grumbled Grandad. Jamie and Fiona went out into the garden to wait for Bembo to come back. They didn't have to wait long. Bembo came flying over the garden gate and raced towards the house. Something was dangling from his jaws, something brown and slippery. What can it be? said Fiona. Bembo sat down proudly at Jamie's feet. Jamie took the slippery brown thing out of the dog's mouth. He laughed so much he almost fell over. That's not a slipper, Bembo, he said. It's a kipper. Yuck, said Fiona, making a face. Mum gave the kipper to the cat. I told you Bembo was a stupid dog, snorted Grandad. He sat in his old armchair and sulked. Bembo looked sad and hung his head. Jamie felt sorry for him. Never mind, Bembo, he said. You did your best. Let's go and play in the garden. Jamie threw Bembo's rubber ball down the lawn and Bembo brought it back. Good dog, said Jamie. Bembo wagged his tail. My turn now, said Fiona. She threw the ball. This time, it didn't roll over the grass. It bounced through the kitchen doorway and rolled under Grandad's chair. What a rotten throw, said Jamie. Fetch the ball, Bembo, said Fiona. Bembo ran into the kitchen. He lay on the floor and put his head under Grandad's chair. He wriggled out with something in his mouth. It wasn't the ball. It was Grandad's lost slipper, the red velvet one that Betty had sent from America. It had been under Grandad's chair all the time. Grandad! laughed Jamie. Bembo has found your slipper. Everybody hugged and patted Bembo. Even Grandad began to smile. He's the cleverest dog in the world, he said. Haven't I always said so? That's the end of our story. Did you manage to read along with me right to the end? If you've enjoyed this story, you will also enjoy the other first young puffins available on cassette. 
Look out for the incredible shrinking hippo, SOS for Rita, and bubblegum bother. They are all read by Josie Lawrence.